today is May 13th, and this was the last day of RuPaul's Drag Con. I think that it was an overall pretty cute, gay old time. The Tyra Sanchez thing was kind of looming over everything, you know? Still a little bit. Think about how disappointed I was when that countdown got to zero and nothing happened. Not even a fucking, like, sparkler or anything. Jesus. There were kids of all ages and all binaries. And also, what made it really funny was that not only is it a family affair, but there was also a pornography con right next to it. But then we had the protest. There was, like, this one man and his, like, 12-year-old probably gay son. And they were protesting the drag queens. But those protesters were vile. They were like, your sin is as visible as your whiskers. Yeah. I felt like there was a very, like, if you went to DragCon last year, there was like a regalia to the season nine girls. Like people were like, like they were a focus. You know what I mean? Like they were there. Like the 10 girls were like sporadic everywhere, put in corners. Well, the thing is, is like they had just had all stars too. So it was like, like who do people? So the all stars people were like more center than the than the uh, than the ten girls. But you know what? What it's really all about is what drag con to me is all about is like seeing all these poor unfortunate souls that just like walk around in drag just to be seen. It makes me think about when I was doing drag young when I was younger. I was like. We get all boogered up just to go out to the bars to see if someone would buy us a drink. You know what I mean? And now these kids get to go to a fucking whole convention. And I mean, who knows what could happen. PJ, how was your drag con? You've uh, been doing drag like all weekend, right? Yeah, since like Wednesday. It was very different compared to last year, whereas last year I felt really overwhelmed uh -huh. how many people were reacting to Yeah, there to was, me. oh, reacting to you, I'm sorry. No, I people, you were... yeah, people loved me. Did you meet any queens that you've never met before? Uh, the only person that I would really cared to like really meet that I was excited to meet, I met at nightgowns and it was Tinderoni. You know what, I met Tinderoni too for the first time. He's a Chicago king and is doing like Pretty impressive very stuff. Well. I mean, it's for, a shame like, that... has been doing drag for less than two years? Yeah. Very short amount of time. And just moved to Chicago a few years ago. Yeah, it's um, sickening. There was actually more of a king presence at DragCon this year, I think. Yeah. We have a show starting around 10 p.m. Our headline includes Pink Che Queen, Lucy Stuhl, and the one, the only, Shea Coulee from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. Remember when she was robbed? Get ready, bitches. Can we raise those, please? An old bitch can tell you more because they've been around, but they're also too old to be doing all that death drop shit, so kids don't give a fuck about them. No one wants the, the story time. They just want to see the number. My job is emceeing. That's what I do. And my job is dying out. Hi, Precinct. How are we? Welcome to the unofficial closing party of DragCon Weekend, everybody. Did we all get the pictures that we wanted? Did we all overpay for people that you can see on reruns on Amazon? Well, this is, uh, this party is lame, because, um, I have been good friends with Shay for a long time, and as soon as she got famous, I was like, I want to throw a party that's called This Party's Lame, starring Shea Coulee. Because <laughs> I'll keep the bitch humble. You say whatever you want. 
All right, Lucy Stool. So you came all the way here from Chicago for DragCon. Tell us about your DragCon girl. I had a pretty decent weekend. I was there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Got to interact with a lot of people I only see on the internet. Got to slap a few booties. It was a, it was a pretty good time. <laughs> pretty good. What would you say, uh, what was the most memorable part of your weekend? Um, hands down, uh, having Shirley Ralph flag me down and tell me to come here. Uh, I will never forget that moment for the rest of my life. That was fantastic. The highlight of the highlight of my life, absolutely. I'm like, yes, Dina Jones. I was losing it. She goes, how dare you try and walk past me? Get back over here. And I was like, Shirley yes. Ralph just fucking called for me. Oh my God. Tony. Farrah. <laughs> Love you. You look so gorgeous. Thank you. No, bitch, I was Are you going pink? What's up? I got a little bastard. You're a trendsetter, but I'm too old to pull that off. How was the first number? Good. I'm like ready to get this little one out. And look at us, everybody. We have Shea Coulee from RuPaul's Drag Race season nine. Uh, um, excuse me, sir. The meet and greet happens after the show. I paid my $60 and all I got was a crappy shirt. <laughs> now, you just came off of your season last season. How is it different from your premiere drag con to now? Oh my God. Well, it's no, no longer my first rodeo, so I know exactly what to expect and how to prepare myself how to stay hydrated, have my snacks. People you did a drink. panel with Jazz and Master. Yes. Tell me what this panel was about. Um, this panel was us really, really fucking high, just shooting the shit with no real direction, just Jasmine moderating in the only way that Jasmine can moderate, and that's just by asking us if we're tops or bottoms, if we like to dodge before we fuck, and, um, yeah, that's about it. If you want to shush before you fuck, I dush. thought fucking was shush. No, dush. Uh, what's dush? Oh, it's, douche. No, dush. What's dush? It's like douche, but the way Jasmine says it. She says douche is for white girls. Dush. dush. Yes, bitch! Yes, bitch! She says dush is the judge for your tush. Uh, what is your most memorable fan experience uh, this year? I would actually have to say... Um, these two little sisters, Riley and Avery, who I met last year, coming back this year and seeing how much they've grown. Oh. It was just like so like, oh, I'm so sweet. When I met her, I was a freshman at Columbia College in Chicago. We're at a bar Sunday brunch, and I bump into her, we're both drunk at this bar. I make the mistake of going, you're Tony Soto, aren't you? Because I swear to God, this bitch to this day always tells people she's like, Shake who they started out as a fan of me.